Hey there Windowers and welcome to this week's live stream and as always thank you for being here thank you for your patience uh, because I'm gonna have to change the day this week but I'm I'm glad that you've been able to make it for those of you that are here hopefully uh, we might get some more people joining us shortly hopefully but if not then thank you very much for joining um, how are we all have we had a good week how is it going I can see we've got 22 people in chat at the moment so how is everyone so uh, who have we got? We've got Nymphs. Hello, thank you for joining. Windows 7.7. .7. We've got Flamepoint. Hi, Flamepoint. Nice to see you. Still, Lean P is here. Dominic, who's our moderator, is here. Thanks for joining, Dominic. We've got Nitro Purple. We've got Sky. Loads of people. Love it. So how is everyone? Pancake, thanks for joining. I recognize you from the last stream. It says they are good. How about you? I am okay. Yeah, I am not bad. Thank you for asking. Uh, w Gardner says that they're good. Jonathan says, meh. Why meh? What was that personal question? Hopefully the stream will help. Hopefully. Um, Windows Pro says, good. Awesome. Glad you could join. So yeah, we're going to do, do something a little bit different this week again. So uh, if you were in the last stream from two weeks ago, so the streams are every fortnight in case you don't know. So two weeks ago, we looked at Windows XP and we were basically transforming it into different versions of Windows. So we did it sensibly first where we so sort of applied different transformation packs and kind of rated them out of Windows versions, which was brilliant. So we had like me out of me out of 11 or 7 out of 11, which was a great idea that someone had. I think I'm sure someone in chat had that idea that I then stole because I loved it so much. So yeah, we did it sensibly first. Then we kind of tried installing all the transformations at once and we made a sort of hybrid Windows thing even with like mac os leopard in it as well for some reason so yeah it was it was a bit weird so yeah we had we definitely had fun last time we did 
So yeah, who was here last time actually? Pancake, you were here. I, I remember Dominic was here. Uh, Flame Point, Orbitron. Who else was here? Sky was here. So yeah, we had quite a few people. It was uh, it was intense, wasn't it? It was four hours. Well, it was over four hours. I think it was almost five hours that we were streaming for last time. Um, right. Ah, uh, yeah, now Flame Point, this is a good idea. Maybe, so this is talking about today's stream. So actually, let me talk about this first. So you can probably tell from the title and thumbnail, we're going to be having a look at Windows 1. So this is, hence the name, which I'm sure you've worked out if you didn't know already. This is the first version of Windows, and it came out in 1985, but I'll talk a bit more about this in a minute. So yeah, we're going to be having a look at Windows 1. Now, I did put a couple of polls on the stream chat before the stream, and I basically asked whether people were interested in seeing the installation process for Windows 1 and the outcome was yes so basically to install Windows 1 you need to have MS-DOS and you also need to obviously install the operating system so we will do both of those things and something will probably go wrong because again if you're a regular in a Windows on Windows stream you know that something always goes wrong and it's usually my fault so just to make you aware that there will probably be technical problems but we'll do our best to overcome them we usually do don't we uh, yeah, yeah. still you were here last stream as well, yep, thanks for reminding me, I remember now that you've said that. Um, yeah, so, shall we, in fact, firstly, let's go to the actual virtual machine that I've set up here, so, I'll just uh, show you this. Let me just turn this on as well. I'm just going to check that that has actually worked. Yes, it appears to have worked. It's just a slight delay on my little stream preview. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so as you can see, now this is a Windows 1 VM that I've set up already. So this does have everything installed already and it's basically ready to go. However, for the purposes of the stream and again for the people that voted to say that they wanted to look at the install process, obviously we will do the install process anyway. So at the moment, what you can see on the screen, now this would be what you would see if you inserted and booted from an MS-DOS floppy disk. So specifically, the version that I have that works well with Windows 1 is MS-DOS 3. So if you had an MS-DOS 3 disk and you would need an MS-DOS disk to be able to run Windows 1 because you have to launch it from DOS. So this is what you would see if you booted from the disk. So MS-DOS 3, when you boot, it always asks you to enter the date and time, which I mean, I guess it is kind of annoying, but I mean, it's useful, isn't it? Uh, but, and again, I'm just going to go through some of these details in case anyone's interested and in case they haven't used MS-DOS or Windows 1. You can just completely skip this. So you don't actually have to enter the date and time every time. It will ask in case you need to change the date and time on the system. But if you want to skip this, you can literally just press enter and it will just skip. So that means that you're literally just telling it to keep the current date and time and you're not changing anything. So when you've done that, then you get to the MS-DOS prompt, which I'm sure most people will recognize. This is very famous. Uh, so we have a C prompt here. Um, now, before I carry on, let me just go back to chat here. So let me just catch up. Uh, so we've got, ah oh yeah, smart, nin smart Ninja, if I can say your name. Thanks for joining. I noticed you were here earlier as well. Who else have we got? The Solar, who has two eyes, which we found out on Twitter earlier, didn't we? <laughs> yes. Um... Orbitron says my chat keeps dying. That's kind of annoying. Aiden Matt says, is the stream available in Nebraska? Well, I don't know, actually. Yes. I don't think we should exclude Nebraska for the purposes of this. It's, a, it's educational, isn't it? I'll make an allowance there. Um, right. Do, 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 do. The Windows Pro says, can you disable the date time picker? I don't know, actually. Does anyone know that in MS-DOS 3? Can you disable the date time prompt? I'm not sure. I'm not aware of you being able to, but I might be wrong. Anyway, so yeah, so let's go through this process of um, installing Windows 1. So, like I said, the first thing you need is an MS-DOS disk, which I have here. And in fact, I've already copied it to the hard drive, but I mean, like I said, this is exactly what you'd see if you booted from the floppy disk anyway, so there's no difference. So, assuming that you have a completely blank hard drive, which again, we're going to assume here, because people want people said they wanted to see the entire install process, the first thing you'd have to do would be to, to partition the hard drive. So, from MS-DOS, you would just run FDisk. So, actually, now that I've 
said that let me just check this do i have this floppy disk inserted let's do that because i'm going to need to go back to the disk to do this so f disk again it's quite a famous dos tool um you usually would use this to partition hard drives when you're installing for example i mean any dos based version of windows but common examples 95 windows 98 you'd have to partition your hard drive so you'd usually use f disk so i'm just going to quickly go through this it gives you a lot of options but we just want to create basically a dos partition however before i do that because i already have a partition on here i need to, to delete the one that's already there so let's do that so we'll delete this primary dos partition and it will say are you sure you want to do this because it will remove all of your data so yes we will do that and even though i know it doesn't matter because it's a virtual machine this is still worrying me whenever you get to this point you always there's like a slight panic do i really want to do this so yes i do there we go and we've deleted the partition okay uh so now we should be able to press option one and now create a new primary dos partition and this will be the partition where we will eventually install windows so yes we want to use we want to mark it active use the maximum size um okay system will now restart insert dos diskette it's already in there okay so it was just to make sure that we were going to boot into dos afterwards okay perfect so now you can see we've got so we've got a blank partitioned hard drive and now we've booted back into the dos via the floppy so again it's going to ask for date and time but again i'm just going to press enter to skip this and we'll go back to the prompt so now the next thing we want to do is format the hard drive and again this is exactly what you would do if you were installing windows 98 or you know a dos based version of windows so we're going to format c and again panic moment it will say are you sure you want to do this because anything on the drive will be lost and you cannot undo this action so yes we want to proceed with the format so let's do that and there we go we formatted the hard disk ready for windows one and I'm, again i'm just going to pause here to have a look in chat so let's see smart ninja says it's very blurry is it blurry it shouldn't be blurry is anyone else having problems with it being blurry it shouldn't be nimsk says i just found out that windows one exists yesterday awesome um right, what else do we have Doo -doo -doo. still mp says did you get windows 1.04 or windows 1.01 i'm actually not sure what version i have but we'll find out when we boot into windows nor says hello i am back hello no i i do remember you from the last time you were here thanks for joining good to see you hello to solar strike who's also here thanks for joining and by the way solar strike just you might need to just put a message about this near the end let me just close this door sorry my uh my budgies are being very loud uh yeah so solar strike is going to be doing a stream after this where you're going to be looking at windows xp betas i think like installing them one after the other and looking at what's changed and so on so if you're interested i'm gonna hopefully be there and i think correct me if i'm wrong solar solar strike it's gonna be after the end of this stream so if you're interested i'll get solar strike to um send me a link and then i can send a link in the chat but hopefully if you're interested i'll see you there okay nimsk has nimsk I can, why can't i say names today i don't know i'm probably it's probably because i'm really tired nimsk says it's not blurry okay perfect um okay so what was i doing yeah by the way i mean <laughs> i uh i i i went out yesterday i went on a night out okay it wasn't like when it's not an, it wasn't a night out where you get like really really like inebriated and do really stupid things but i did have some beer so i'm currently recovering slightly from this night out and this is part of the reason by the way why i couldn't do the stream yesterday because i was meeting friends that i've not seen for a long time so um yeah if if you notice that i'm a little bit off that's probably why because i'm still trying to recover from this being a very old person that i am it takes me a long time to recover from uh, from beer and related things um okay so where was i right so we've we've formatted the hard drive okay so now we want to copy the dos system to the hard drive so let's do that so if you do sys c that will copy the required dos files 
to the hard drive and I believe that means that now we would be able to actually boot from the hard drive rather than having the floppy disk in the floppy drive. So as a minimum this would be fine and you could obviously take the disk out, reboot, in fact let's check that but I'm sure that's right. Let's just actually check. So if you take the disk out because I've not used early DOS a lot. In fact, I've not used DOS a lot. So let's just check. I think that's what's going to happen. Oh, okay, no, so that doesn't happen. So let's uh, reset this. So we'll boot from floppy. Okay, we don't need date and time. Um, yeah, so we're doing sysc to transfer the system. And now we want to copy the files as well from the floppy disk. So let's do this. And now this should enable us to boot from the hard disk without the floppy drive. Now, MS-DOS 3, I think it comes on two, I think it's meant to come on two disks, but I think mine is combined into one image file, I'm pretty sure, hopefully. So now, if I remove this disk, now, fingers crossed, and this will be where something goes wrong if it happens, because it's a Windows Windows stream, but now we should be able to boot from the hard drive, hopefully. There we go, perfect. So now we've got DOS on the hard drive, ready to install Windows on. Perfect. Um, okay. Uh, so let's get our first Windows disk. Now I don't know actually, can you see these VMware windows when I open them? Let me just check. I'm going to look at my little preview here. Yeah, you can. Okay. So we want to go to choose floppy image and then I've got everything I need here already. So we want to go to Windows 1, which, which is this one. I think it was still Lean P that was asking what version of Windows 1 I had. It's this one, 1.01. So we're going to go to disk one out of five, which is the setup disk, and insert that into the drive. Um, now, actually, and I think I've made a note of this. Have I? Yes. Yes. Now, there is a slight problem here. Now, you can just install. Now, if you're using a virtual machine, I should have said this is what I'm talking about. If you're virtualizing Windows one, then there is a potential problem depending on how you're virtualizing it. If you're using a common piece of virtualization software like VMware, like I am, then you will be able to install it fine. However, you'll notice that when it is installed, you won't be able to use the mouse. And that's because Windows 1 natively doesn't have support for PS2 mouse drivers, which is what VMware and other popular virtualization softwares emulate. So there is a way around this. You will need a copy of Windows 2 to do this. And basically all we're gonna do is copy the mouse driver from Windows 2 and transplant it into Windows 1. And it works. So yeah, it works. So you can see I've got two floppy drives. I've already put the disk, it's disk two of Windows 2 into this floppy drive. And now I've got my first Windows 1 disk in the first floppy drive. So now, and again, I'm gonna go back to my notes here. So we wanna go to the B drive and now we want to copy this mouse driver file, which is called mouse.derv to the A drive. So we're copying from Windows 2 over to Windows 1. And that means that now we should be able to go through the setup process normally. And then at the end, we should have, hopefully, again, with a little disclaimer, because things always, goes wrong, or things always go wrong when I'm streaming, but we should have a working mouse as well at the end of this process. Okay, so just before I go into setup, again, I'm going to just check what's going on in chat, just in case. Uh, so let's see. Dominic, I'm not going to install this 11 times. That might be fun, though, but I'm not going to do that. Um, right. Orbitron says, I'm starting a series similar to your videos, except of being split into several videos. It's all in one video. Are you talking about like build videos, looking at builds? Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, right. What else we got? Nitro says, bye, we'll be back. Hopefully we'll see you again later. Thank you for joining. Ah, Orbitron, yeah, this is a good point. Orbitron says that mouse drivers, or lack thereof, is why I use 86 box for that kind of thing. Sadly, it isn't for Mac. Yeah, you're right. It, now, if you're on PC, 86 box is a great piece of virtualization software, and it's free, and it's so customizable, isn't it? So, yeah, I actually think you wouldn't even have this problem with 86 box. But, I mean, yeah, if you're using something really popular like VirtualBox or VMware, then, yeah, you would have to do this. Uh, Doors is here. Hello, thanks for joining, and Nitro is back. Thank you for joining. Okay, so shall we go into setup for Windows 1? So, we'll just type setup. Now, 
again, just in case you haven't seen this, this is the Windows One setup. It's very minimal. And I mean, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, we're talking 1985 here. So it's very similar to, again, early versions of Windows setup. So if you think of, for example, the Windows NT setup process, which was used in XP, for example, it's very similar to this. It's all text based. Uh, text based. Uh, the only difference here is that there's a black background instead of blue, but a similar idea, isn't it? Okay, so you can see it says, Setup prepares Microsoft Windows to run on your computer. It also helps you to set up your disks in the most efficient way for starting Microsoft Windows, running Windows applications, and printing from Microsoft Windows when you're ready. And now we have a choice. Would we like to continue or quit? So we're going to press C to continue. So then it says you can set up Microsoft Windows to run from a floppy disk or from a hard disk. Please indicate the type of disk you want when you're ready. And again, we've got a prompt here. So we're going to go for set up on a hard disk. So we'll press H. And now it says set up or copy the file, Windows files to your hard disk. Please type below the full path name of the directory where you would like set up to put the Windows files. So you can customize this and install it wherever you like. We're just going to go with the good old standard C Windows. And you can see, and that wasn't a pun, but I mean, that would have been a good one. You can see that the C Windows convention, it literally started with Windows 1. Yeah, and this is basically where all future versions of Windows would put themselves by default, apart from early versions of NT, but we'll, we'll just ignore that for now. So yeah, we'll go with C Windows. Okay, so now we've just got a little reminder of what we're going to need. So if you think about how you'd have to do this back in 1985 or back in the day, you would have to have literally a stack of floppy disks. So you'd have your MS-DOS disks, you'd have the stack of disks for Windows 1. So now this is just checking before you start that you're going to have all the disks you need. So you can see it says you're going to need the Microsoft Windows setup disk, the build disk, the utilities disk, the desktop applications disk and the Microsoft Write program disk. You will also need to know the following because it's not going to be able to set these things up automatically for you. So if you have a pointing device like a mouse, you will need to know what kind of mouse you have. If you have a graphics adapter or well, you will have a graphics adapter, but you'll need to know what type of graphic graphics adapter it is in order to select the correct graphics settings. If you have a printer, same as the mouse, you'll have to know what type of printer you have and then how it connects to your computer. So again, we're going to continue because I do have all those things. Um, okay, so now we have to select the appropriate pieces of hardware to match what we have. So in order to operate correctly, Microsoft Windows needs to know what kind of pointing device you have. Now, I think, I think for VMware, I think I just chose Microsoft Mouse. So I'm just going to go with that, I think, and hope that works. Um, so now we've got the same choice for the graphics settings. So what did I choose here? I think I chose enhanced color display, which would be six here. Okay, and now it's going to copy files. Uh, okay, so you can see it's copied the files from the first disk. So let's put the next one in here. And obviously this part will be a lot quicker virtually than it would be with actual floppy disks. So that is definitely a good thing. So we'll put in the build disk and let's continue. Okay, and then we'll put in disk three. So again, as you can see, it's a very simple install process where, oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, Mac OS, I don't know if anyone else uses, anyone else uses Mac, but uh, sometimes it does that where it literally will not show me the contents of a folder for like a few seconds, which is very annoying. I don't know how that is even, an existing thing um okay so now would you like to set up a printer well i mean i do have a printer but it's not going to work with windows one and we're not going to use it so we'll just press n um okay and now we're going to need the next disk which is disk four and continue now we're going to need the next disk so this disk has microsoft write on it which came bundled with windows one which was very useful to have a text editor and continue. Okay, so now you can see it says Windows is set up to operate on your computer. You are now in the Windows directory to start Windows, type win and press the enter key. So basically we are ready to go into Windows. So this is gonna be the next moment of truth 
because when we go into Windows, I should have a functioning mouse if I've set everything up correctly. So please cross your fingers with me because if this doesn't work, then, well, actually, no, if this doesn't work, I have a snapshot, so it's fine. But let's actually see if I have written my own instructions correctly. This should now work with a mouse. So let's find out. Perfect. Oh, look at that. Perfect. I'm so proud of myself. So there you go. We have a working mouse and here we are in windows one uh now um oh actually before I, no wait before i carry on let me just catch up on chat here before i do that uh let's see uh right green light says they're watching the stream from outside their house glad they could make it are you mean are you meaning literally you're in your garden or something or are you like somewhere else are you at someone else's house or out shopping or what that's good though thanks for joining uh right solar strike says it goes much faster here than it does on 95's floppy version yes i mean if anyone's installed anything from actual floppy disks <laughs> you need a lot of patience you really do they, they are very slow um right so green light says personalize it a bit okay yeah so this is the next thing i was going to say so now that i've showed you the install process that again people were asking for so i don't mind doing it i'm actually now going to go back to the original virtual machine that i had where i've already copied over all of the program files that we're going to be using and when i'm there i'll then you know we'll have a look at the system and stuff when we're there as well so i'm just going to briefly come out of the virtual machine so let me go to full screen me apologies about this for a moment but it's only going to be for a minute while i while i sort these virtual machines out uh so yes oh look there i am on my little preview worrying worrying okay right so all i'm going to do very quickly is literally just copy back my backup that i had of the virtual machine uh so that is there I'm just going to call this Windows One Old. Copy this over. And again, we have an opportunity for something to go wrong, but it shouldn't go wrong because I have not done anything to these files apart from move them. Um, right, we'll get rid of that. Okay, and now we're back in DOS. So let me bring you back to my virtual machine seamlessly as if nothing happened. And again, now, if all goes well, we should be able to go straight back into Windows as if nothing had changed. Oh, look. Oh, no, wait. No, 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 wait. I almost panicked then. I'm not in the right directory. Let's try that again. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so let me just double check. Because on the face of it, this, this looks exactly the same. But I should have, if I go to the C drive. Yeah, I, so you can see... If I go to the root directory of C, I've added this apps folder. So in the apps folder, I've basically put in loads of setup files. So these are the pieces of software that we're gonna be going through basically and having a look at what they are. Now, most of these things, if not all of them, I have no idea what they are, literally. And honestly, I can't even remember where I got these from. I'm imagining I probably downloaded these from archive.org, but I mean, I've had these, I have loads of setup files saved on my computer for all sorts of different versions of windows these just happen to be the files that i had saved for windows one so i have not indicated where i got them from but i'm imagining it's going to be somewhere like archive.org so this is the software that we will have a look at before we do that let's actually just explore the system itself so let's just go back to the default view here and again i'm just going to have a little check on chat for a moment. Um, so. Ah, Doors says that they've posted a file that works on Windows 1 in streams. Thank you, Doors. You have reminded me, actually, that I should probably talk about this. Um, so, in the stream, if you want to share anything, then if you're on the Discord, if you go to the streams channel, you'll be able to share it here. And it means that I'll be able to, you know, if there's anything that you want me to download or whatever, you can put it here. So I may, 
I'll try and get through these things if I can. I may not be able to get through everything, but I'll try my best. So yeah, if you've got anything to share, just post that here. And doors, actually, what you've posted, I may... I recognize that. I think I may have this as part of my files. And actually, I didn't mention this. Some of the files that I'm going to be using, some of the setup files, they are floppy disk images as well, actually. So they're not all in the Windows install here. Some of them are actually disk images as well. Um, right. Zocker says, I really enjoy watching your stream. Thank you. I'm glad that you're finding it entertaining. While I get my Dell uh, Windows Vista laptop ready. Awesome. What are you doing with your Vista laptop? Vista would be quite a strange thing to install nowadays, wouldn't it? Unless you needed it for something. What are you planning to do with your laptop? Solar Strike says, how about a Windows 98 floppy install? I mean, actually, like, honestly, I would love to do that. Would anyone like to see that in the stream? That would take a, a, an extremely long time. I'd actually have to buy floppy disks to do that because I don't have enough physical disks. Unless I, like, did it in groups of 20 or something. And is it, how many disks does it need? 38 or something? I could probably do it like that. Um... Ooh, hang on. My, what my chat's messed up here? What's going on here? I can only see half the chat. That's not helpful. Let's just refresh that. Uh, okay, perfect. So yeah, this is Windows 1. So again, just in case anyone's here that's not aware about Windows 1, it was the first version of Windows. It came out in 1985. Um, now the idea for Windows 1 came a lot earlier than that. So we're talking the very early 80s. So one thing that led to Bill Gates wanting to do this is that he saw a similar piece of software called Vision. And it it's very similar to this in that it's a graphical environment. You know, so you have a, a very similar interface to this. And in fact, during the early 80s, lots of companies were trying to come up with similar things like this. So basically like graphical interfaces to hopefully try and get away from people having to use the command line to do everything. So it was a very popular thing that was going on at the time. So Windows was obviously Microsoft's answer to this. We also had at the time Apple with the Macintosh, which again is a very similar interface. Uh, Vision, which was by Visicorp, I think that's right. Uh, and you know, there were lots of other companies doing it as well. So famously, Windows 1 took an extremely long time to actually be released. Uh, it was delayed many times. Microsoft promised release dates many times and they always got delayed. So eventually, after what seemed like a very, very long time, it eventually came out, I think it was in November 1985, after it had been, you know, hyped up for literally three years, two, three years at the time. Um, so yeah, when it came out, it wasn't very popular. And the first version of Windows that was actually really popular was Windows 3, which came out in 1990, so five years later. So even though now it's significant because it's the first version of Windows, which is obviously extremely popular nowadays, at the time, it wasn't a really well-known thing. So unless you were really into, you know, tech and operating systems, you probably wouldn't have known about it really, to be honest. I mean, I'm not sure, but I'm just guessing that, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't like a thing that everyone was conscious of at the time. Um, yeah, so here we are on Windows 1. So um, one of the, one of the big things that Windows 1 has that was seen as a very, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this. Something that was very unusual in that it was kind of very new at the time was the idea of using a mouse. So most people computing would have been used to a using graphical, uh, sorry, using command line interfaces like DOS and also would have been using a keyboard to interact with the computers, you know, 100% of the time. So when Windows 1 came out, it was one of the first pieces of software that used a mouse. So a lot of people using this would have probably never used a mouse before and again that sounds really strange to say now because we're so used to using mice but at the time it was a very new piece of technology uh so yeah that's also interesting about this so if you have a look around the interface here we have many elements that are actually the same as they still are today in windows so for example we've got a title bar at the top here 
with sender text to show the the name of the window that we're looking at so this is the ms dos executive and the ms dos executive is what you first see when you boot into windows one and it's essentially windows explorer it's the file manager for windows one ms dos executive and by default it will show you what you have in your windows directory so you can see here we've got essentially an address bar which is showing that we're in C Windows. If you wanna switch between different places, then you can just literally uh, click on, so if I click on C, for example, it will give me this little box and I can specify what directory I wanna to go to. If you are, um, let's just do this actually. If you are, can I, how do I create a directory? Let's do this. And actually, yeah, some of these things I'm not even sure about myself because I have not used it enough. Let's just uh, do this. So yeah, so I was trying to show that if you're in a directory, in a directory, then if you want to go back to the previous directory, you can just click its name again here and you can change back to that directory. So that's what I wanted to show. Um, so yeah, you can also see here, we have our drives that we have installed. So we have the two floppy drives, which are A and B, and then C, which is the hard drive. Um, so again, these elements are very similar to what would be in, in, in uh, Windows Explorer in future versions of Windows, basically. Yeah, so we can see what drives we have. We've got some sort of navigation thing here. We have the menus at the top, which again would make the way into future versions of Windows. The file menu is a very common one that most applications will have. Um, and then we also have this button in the top left corner of each window. So this has two functions. And again, you can still do this today in Windows 10 or 11. If you double click this, it will close the window. Now, because the window that we're currently looking at is the MS-DOS executive. The way this works is slightly different. So instead of closing the MS-DOS executive, it will actually end the window session. So that is a special case for the MS-DOS executive. If you try and close this window, it will close, it will literally close our windows and it will say this will end your window session. Okay, cancel. If you press okay, you just go back to DOS. If you want to go back in, you just type win basically and we go back. Now, if you're in any other application, so let's just open calculator, for example, then double clicking this will just close that application. So the MS-DOS executive is kind of like your desktop, essentially, although actually, you, and this sort of leads into the next function of this button. If you hold your mouse button down on this button, then you get this menu. So in this menu, you have basically the same options for each window there's size move icon zoom and close and again with the ms-dos executive it's slightly different so there are some things that we can't do here but if we go into calculator again we'll just have a quick look at these so you can see here we've got uh move so this will allow you to move the window around to another place so actually probably a better way to show this is if i open multiple windows uh so let's do this okay so move will allow you to move it to where another window currently is so if i take this little icon and press on calculator it will move not calculator calendar it will move the calculator to that spot where calendar was um the next option which is icon if you press this it it's basically minimize so it minimizes it to the bottom of the screen and this is effectively a little bit like the taskbar it wasn't called the taskbar at the time but it functions kind of similar in a very basic way anyway so minimized or iconized programs are down here then the next option is zoom and that is basically maximize so that is as you can see showing it full screen and we also cannot see the taskbar, or I'm going to call it the taskbar, but I mean, it wasn't called the taskbar, but you can see we, we can't see that anymore. And then we obviously have close, which will just close the application. Each application has this little about option here, which will tell you a little bit about the application. And then the very last option, let me just open that again, is size. And this will allow you to change funnily enough the size of the window so if you click and hold you can drag up or down and this will change basically the height of the window so let's do that again so you can see you can completely customize the height now this button on the right hand side of each window that also is a size button so you don't actually have to go into this menu to do that you can just literally press this button and that will do the same thing so if you click and drag you can change the height of the window now on the face of it this is quite rudimentary, right? So you may have noticed, again, if you haven't used Windows 1, you've probably noticed by now that you can't overlap windows. There's no overlapping at all. In fact, the only things that you could probably say are overlapping are these dialog boxes. So like if you press an about 
option and get an about dialog box. This you can see is obviously overlapping the app windows in the background, but actual application windows themselves, they can't overlap each other. So the name of this sort of interface is called tiled, funnily enough, because they look like tiles. And this was a deliberate choice for, win for Windows 1. So they're especially in the past to so say like 10 years ago i don't think it was as well known i think and i was included we used to think that the reason windows 1 had tiled windows is because microsoft for whatever reason couldn't actually implement overlapping windows at the time however it turns out that actually they could and in some early versions of windows 1 there were overlapping windows so it was actually a conscious decision that was made to change from overlapping to tiled windows and there could be multiple reasons why one of them which is a big reason may have been to make it less similar to mac os or mac so obviously mac has overlapping windows it, it had them at the time as well so it could have been just to make it a little bit less similar to mac essentially uh and yeah i mean there's so many different there's so much detail to all this history about Windows 1. I could talk about this all day and all night, but I won't. I'll try and keep it relatively simple, but there are other things going on as well with, with this history. But in, in simple terms, that's probably one of the big reasons why they didn't go for overlapping Windows. Yeah, so Orbiton's talking about lawsuit. Yeah, this is one of the things that I'm not really going to go all into now, but yes. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, because I may get some of these details wrong, but essentially I think... Microsoft had the rights to use some graphical interface elements from Apple. So they were allowed to a degree to make Windows to a degree similar to the Macintosh. However, they were trying to be careful because they didn't want to overstep what Apple deemed that they were allowed to do. So if they made it too similar, they were then worried that Apple might say, hang on, you stole that from us. And then there's this whole legal thing going on, which actually happened, unfortunately later on but yes microsoft were very cautious early on to try and distance the windows user interface as much as they could from the mac to you know to basically not tread on apple's territory too much so that's probably why they went for tiled windows although as it happens which again if you know your windows history you might know in windows 2 which came out two years after windows 1 that did have overlapping windows so they completely changed their minds anyway so yeah um what was i talking about overlapping windows yeah okay uh oh yeah i was gonna i was gonna just very quickly open a few more apps here let's do this um now you can see very quickly in windows one it gets very messy so if you have three apps open it gets to a point where you can't really see what you're doing so one of the things i wanted to show is that you can if i remember how to do this correctly you can actually um how do you do this hang on i'm gonna probably forget you can have the windows yeah Okay, this is what I'm trying to do. You can have the windows stacked vertically as well. So obviously this makes it a little bit easier to manage when you have lots of apps open. So you can have them tiled horizontally and vertically at the same time. So you can see this is definitely better than it was a minute ago. Uh, so let's open Reversi. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but when you're used to it, it's okay. Um... Wait, so hang on. Now that I've said that, how do I get that other app back that was just open here? What else did I just have open? I actually can't remember now. It was it was this, wasn't it? Ah, oh, here we go. Okay. So let's put this here. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Right. Now that we have Reversi open, we can all laugh about Reversi. I'm just going to quickly come back to chat and catch up on what's going on here. Let's see before I move on. Right. Doo, 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 doo. Greenlight was asking what was the first ever Windows beta to be leaked, but I can see that Orbitron answered that actually already. It was Windows 1, developer release 5. Um, Just excuse me a second. There's a lot of messages here that I, I've not I've not read. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Sky says, "Can you believe it, Reversi? I can't believe it. I actually can't." Um. 
Flame Point says, can't you just drag the title bar to move the window instead of going into that menu? You may be able to actually, I'm not sure, let's try. Yeah, you can, you can. Thanks, Flame Point. I mean, I have used Windows 1 in virtual machines before, I've just not used it to the point where I memorize absolutely everything. So yeah, thanks for that, that's easier, isn't it? You can just drag title bars. That's a lot easier, actually. Look, you can quickly move things around here, really quickly doing that. And Pancake, yeah, this is a good point. Some people prefer tiling their windows even today. Yeah, so actually, there is an option, isn't there, I think? Still, I mean, not in Windows 11, obviously, because well, let's not go into that. But if you right-click the taskbar, there's an option for cascading and tiling windows. Am I right? Or was the tiling one not there anymore? I can't remember now. It's been so long since I've used modern windows, I actually don't remember. But I'm sure there used to be an option to tile windows, didn't there, in the taskbar? Right-clicking on the taskbar. So, yeah. Adam says, how much do you think this advanced operating environment is worth? I see what you did there. Um, right, so yeah, let's have a look. So, okay, I'm going to close some of these apps now. So let's just get rid of these uh, to make it a bit cleaner. Okay, so someone was asking earlier about showing some of the customization. So uh, let's go to the control panel which did exist in Windows 1. And as you can probably imagine by now, it's very simple compared to what we're used to today. So we have options here to set time and date, the cursor blink rate and the double click rate. However, we do have some options up here in menus. So we can, for example, add a new printer or add a new font. We can change some things that we first uh, specified in setup if our hardware changes and then we have a preferences menu and there are two options here there's screen colors and mouse so i think mouse allows you to change your mouse yeah mouse buttons so this will just let you swap your mouse buttons around if you're a left-handed person like me you might find that easier and the most fun one is the screen colors so I'm going to do this for the purposes of showing the customization, but I'm just going to forewarn you if you've not seen this. The colors in Windows 1, the options are pretty bad. It's all garish unless you go full on black and white. So I will make some changes, but I'm going to try and keep it minimal because obviously we're going to have to try and use this interface as well. So um, let's just, we'll do some slight changes here. So let's, uh, what we're doing, window background. Oh, hang on. So window background is the white here, but you can see at the moment it's set on no color. So yeah, look, you can change this here, but I'm going to leave that on white because if I change that from white, that's going to be really annoying. Window text obviously is the text in the center. So again, you can change this. I'm just going to leave it on black again. Scroll bars will change the color of the scroll bars. So I mean, we can change this. Let's just make it yellow or something. There we go, we'll have yellow. The active title bar is the title bar, which is currently blue. So let's change this to green, maybe. I'm just going to go for sensible colors here. Yeah, we'll go for green. And then inactive title bar is the inactive title bar. Funnily enough, let's just change this to purple or something. Pink. I don't want any of these cross-hatched patterns, though. I want like a nice color. Wait, let's go to... Oh, no, it's not that one. It's this one that I want. Um, hmm. Can I just have like normal red? There we go. Okay, perfect. And then title bar text is again, obviously the text in the title bar. Window frame is the black border around the windows, which again, I'm not going to change because yeah, you can see, look, that starts to look really, I mean, that, that is awful. So menu bar is the menu bar. I don't know why I'm, why am I going through the list saying what everything is? You know what they are, because it's obvious. Menu bar is the menu bar. Okay, let's make this blue, because I've not used that yet. How about teal? Teal? Not teal, turquoise. Menu text is again the text on the menu. And then screen background is basically the desktop background. So at the moment it's green. So let's change, what have I not used? Maybe blue? No, I've used blue. Dark blue? Yeah, there we go, let's do dark blue. Perfect, so there you go. Oh, actually this is, this is a bit marine isn't it? It's like an ocean theme, why not? So there you go, we've done a little bit of customization of the colors, anyway. Um, so I'll just quickly show you what's in these menus here, because I don't think I did this. So in the MS-DOS Executive, which remember is like your starting point basically, so you have some special options again in these menus. So you've got the run option, where you can specify a direct path to an execu executable to run it. You have load, which I think is the same thing. 
I'm not sure though, I think that's the same thing. Copy, it will allow you to copy what you've currently selected to another directory. Get info, which will tell you a little bit about the thing that again, you've currently selected. So if I choose a file, what does that say? So there you go, look, you've got like a, I'm assuming a creation date and then time. Uh, obviously delete will delete the file, rename will rena rename the file, you can change the view slightly, you can have long file names, well not long file names but long as in it gives you more information on the, you know, for each individual item on the screen. Um, you can choose, you can like filter what's shown, so if you just want to see the programs, the ex executable files, you can do that here. Partial, what can we specify here, is this like literally you can specify a type of file I'm assuming? show it only com files no i'm not sure what that's doing does anyone know what partial does i'm not sure not does it match part of the name maybe i'm not not sure i don't know what that's doing not sure uh and then obviously you can sort them by name by date and so on and then we've got special menu so we've got end session which does the same thing as double clicking on the little icon here which will just end your window session. Create and change directory, format disks, make a system disk, and then set volume name. So this is where you can specify the name of your drive. Let's just do winning. Well, I always call it winning. Ah, by MC, it says type of file extension. Yeah, did I, is it the format that I was doing wrong? Do I have to do this or something? Ah, there you go, yeah, okay, I was missing the asterisk, that's important. Perfect. Thanks for that, by MC. Oh yeah, I can see, yeah, actually, still at Lean P said that as well. Thank you both. Perfect, okay, so, shall we have a look at some of the apps or programs that I have for Windows 1? So, like I said earlier, um, most, if not all of these, I am not familiar with. The only ones I've seen are the few that I randomly opened earlier just to check that they were actually working uh, so this should be fun actually so you can see I've got a large selection we should have time to look at, every, at everything here I think so I've got some things that are in folders which have multiple files that are probably a little bit more complicated and then some are just literally single files single executable files so I think let's start with the single executable files and we'll go through this list to start with here and it should be pretty straightforward um, some of these things did crash Windows, obviously, because what would where would be without a Windows crash? Some did crash Windows earlier, so not all of them will work. I'm not sure why it crashed, but obviously we'll see. Okay, so are we ready? Let's start with 3D Tic Tac, which sounds like it's going to be Tic Tac Toe. So very exciting. Yeah, look, look at that 3D effect. Love it. Love that. Um, I don't know why there are four. Is it like out of four rounds? I'm not sure. But anyway, let's play tic-tac-toe. And the anticipation is killing me here. Okay, so I'm assuming now I can just move on to the next board. Wait, what's going on? Why is... Why did, did that did that just plop something there? Oh wait, is it still trying to win on this one? Oh, hang on. You're not going to win here. Okay. Okay, so you have to just the computer will still try and win on the current board unless you completely block it off. Okay, that actually makes sense. Um right. I've got to try and be a bit more sneaky this time. Uh so Oh. Rip me. Why? Hang on. Why has it gone back to that one now? Why has it just plotted one over there? I thought we'd finished that board. Is this like 80s tic-tac-toe where it's different or what? What's going on here? Um, okay, so wait. So the solar says all four boards are axes where you can make a line. What does that mean? So wait, hang on, does anyone know how this is working? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why, okay, why are there four boards? That's my first question. I don't think I'm understanding this. So it's not four rounds. Is that not right? It's like four boards that all relate to the same game somehow. This is slightly worrying. I thought it was going to be simpler than this. 
Oh no. Okay, wait. Skill. Okay, wait. I'm going to put this on beginner. Let's just go to beginner. And then we'll start again. Because I don't really know what I'm doing. Do you want to go first? Yes. Okay. Right. So buy MC says press the same square on all boards. What? Hang on. What? What's going on? Wait. I don't have any words. What? What is going on? So, I'm just trying to get four things on each of the four boards. Is that all I'm doing? So wait, am I am I literally just trying to do this as many times as I can? Is that what I'm missing here? So I'm trying to get a like a, a cross on each of the four boards as many times as I can. No, the game is over. I feel like I'm being stupid. Am I being stupid? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to put it back on average. Let's see how this is different. Yes, I'm going to go first. Okay, right. Oh, okay. Guys, I get it. I get it. Thank you. I understand. I understand. Okay. So now I can't do what I've just done because the computer is going to get a line there. Okay, I get it. That took an incredibly long time. Thank you all for your help and patience. I understand. <laughs> I think. Famous last words. Okay, so I can just use any of the four boards at any time. Okay, 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 okay. Right. This should go better then. Clearly. Okay. But we can carry on now, right? So. Ah, okay. It, to be fair, it does actually make sense, doesn't it? Hi Danny, thanks for joining. I'm just playing tic-tac-toe at the moment and for some reason it took me an incredibly long time to work out this 3D tic-tac-toe. I don't know why. Right, okay. Um... So wait, why did the computer just win? Is that because they got a point? Oh yeah, because they got one on each of the four. Oh yeah. Okay, I am going to leave 3D Tic-Tac-Toe because that is actually still confusing me slightly. But I mean, if you're a 3D Tic-Tac-Toe fan, I've never played 3D Tic-Tac-Toe. Clearly, it's more it's more complicated in 3D than I imagined. So yeah, if you're a fan, then there you go. You can play 3D Tic-Tac-Toe in Windows 1. Uh, right. Shall we rate the apps, actually? Let's do this. Let's rate the apps. Okay, so 3D Tic-Tac-Toe out of Windows versions, so out of 11. What are your thoughts on this app? Would this entertain you? on, you know, a rainy day, if you had Windows 1, what would you rate this out of 11? 3D Tic-Tac-Toe. We've got, look, different skill st skill levels. You can turn off those really annoying taunts from the computer as well, because they were really annoying. So what would you rate this? Pancake says confusing out of 11. I'd probably agree there. I don't, I don't, I don't know, is it just me? Am I finding that more confusing than it needs to be? Solar Strike says Vista out of 11. Uh, Flame Point says Vista. Danny says 3.1 out of 11. That's harsh harsh uh still says xp out of 11 sky says 11 out of 11 that win made me laugh too hard is that when i got one on each one like literally and then i was like how how did i win oh there you go i'm clearly a genius smart ninja says 11 out of 11 really these are very high scores for 3d Ducto. masked says chicago out of 11 that's very niche isn't it right and Dominic says 8.1 out of 11. Perfect. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. We have balloon.exe. Does anyone, does anyone recognize any of these apps, by the way? Because I don't think I've ever used these. So this is called DaVinci Balloons. This is one of the ones, actually, that I clicked on earlier, just by random, to check that they were actually going to work. And I had no idea what was going on. So just to forewarn you, I'm still going to have no idea probably what's going on. So Balloons, okay, from 1987. So a little bit after Windows 1. But basically, I worked out that if you press the mouse button, it turns into a pin. But but then... No, no, it looks like you're going to be able to pop the balloons right. But then I couldn't work out how to pop them. So, like, clicking the mouse just turns it into a pin. But then, how do you pop the balloons? Because I couldn't work that out. 
So double clicking doesn't do anything. There's no right mouse button, so there's no option there. Uh, so I'm not sure what I'm missing here. Maybe I have to press a key, but then what key? Enter? It's not enter. Space? It's not space. I don't know. Has anyone got any ideas how to pop the balloons? Or is this... I mean, this is this has got to be a pin, right? That is a pin, definitely. I'm not just being stupid. If I don't pop the balloons, then what is this pin for? It's very, very confusing. So, yeah. Any, any ideas, anyone? I don't know. I'm just going to press random keys and see what happens. Why would you have to press a key, though? That's weird in itself. Surely you just click it. Um, control. No, I've got no idea. Absolutely no idea. Uh, pop. Sky says pop the castle. Nope, nothing. Nothing. So there you go. If anyone wants a challenge, work out how to play pop the balloons. Because I I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, right. Let's close out of that so yeah that was balloon uh marks out of 11 for balloon what do we think solar strike says i don't think this is a game i mean <laughs> it might not be it well, is it like an early version of a screensaver maybe i don't know is it maybe i'm just over complicating this maybe it's literally just meant to be oh look at the pretty balloons maybe you're not meant to pop any but then why? Why, when you click, does it change into this? That doesn't make any sense, does it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Pancake says WTF out of 11. Andrew says DR5 out of 11. Yeah, I probably agree with that, I think. Smart says 95 out of 11. Solar Strike says Nashville. Dominic says Odyssey. Yeah, I mean, who knows? If anyone wants to try and work out how to play that game or whatever that is, then please... Do try and let me know. Okay, so let's go to the next file, which is bit 16 times 16. I have no idea what this is. Let's just find out. Oh, okay. It's... Wait. Oh, it's a font. That is a font file. That's not going to work. So these must be for something that we need later on. But I don't know what needs them, so I'm just going to ignore those for now. Yeah, obviously they're font files. Okay, let's go to bounce.exe. Ooh, it's a little bouncing ball. Okay, so what do we think... Orbitron says, I love running fonts. What do we think about this? What is this a game or is this a screensaver again? What? I mean, literally, it is a bouncing ball, isn't it? Clicking is not doing anything. Can I do anything here? No, there's no... I think this I think this one could literally just be a ball that bounces around the screen. There's no about box either. So clearly, maybe in the 80s, this is what the in thing was when you had a computer. You just literally just watched a ball bounce around the screen. So, what do we think about this one? Marks out of 11 for bouncing ball, which has no controls. It's just literally a ball that bounces. No about information. Very simple. What do we think? Danny says XP out of 11. That's generous. Solar Strike says Amiga out of 11. I mean, at least you should be able to change the color of the ball, surely. I mean, come on. The color and texture, maybe, as a minimum here. Flame point says Whistler out of eleven. So yeah, that's a that's a weird one. Tyler T Tyler T T says three point one out of eleven. A masked gives it an XP out of eleven too. Very generous. Okay, so that was bounce. Um, okay, let's go to boxes. What do we think this is going to be? Is this just going to be boxes that are I don't know being unboxed on the screen as a screensaver? What do we think? Boxes. Oh my god. I don't know what to say about this. Does anyone have any any words of wisdom about boxes? Yeah, Orbitron, I think you might be right, actually. Yeah, there was a demo app like this, wasn't there? Is it this, maybe? Yeah, so some of the early um, demo, like some of the early builds of Windows 1 had demo apps where there would just be apps like this, basically, that did random things just to kind of show off what it could do. So, yeah, it does look like one of those, doesn't it, actually, now that you've said that? It could be. So, yeah. It just excused me, by the way, wiping my nose. Yeah. 
Um, right. Yes, Dominic, I I should have given an epilepsy warning if I knew what this was. Unfortunately, I didn't until I clicked it. So yeah, this is boxes. Uh, marks out of, out of 11 for boxes. What do we think? Hello, Windows point uh, Windows 7.7. .7. Thank you for joining. By MC says 11 out of 11. Flame point says seizure out of 11. Danny says 1.01 1 .01 out of 11. Yeah. In fact, which which builds of Windows 1 had these demo programs in? What build was the first one to have boxes if this is that program? I think it is, isn't it? What build was that? That would be my rating. Uh, right. Okay, let's go to browser. Which I'm guessing is not an internet browser, even though it sounds like it. That would be amazing, though. Uh, okay, right. What does it say? We've actually got some information this time, so this could be useful. Right. A shareware Windows application. Copyright 1987. Push function key F1 for more information. Okay, let's do that then. Right. Windows Browse. This is a shareware program. As such, it may be freely copied and distributed for evaluation. If you'd like to use it, la 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 la. But what is the program for? More info? Windows Browser. Browser allows the user to view files. Files may be viewed as ANSI, extended ASCII. Da, 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 da. Browser has the capability to hide lines from you or show them again based on whether or not they contain specified strings. This allows rapid lookup of data. The traditional find command is also supported. Okay, the appropriate command will start with the browser. Okay, so it's a file browser. Okay, right. So let's try and open something. What shall we browse here? Uh, can I go back to the C? How do I go back to the C drive? How can I get out of apps? I can't. Can I? C. Nope. So you can only browse files that are in the same directory as browser. So maybe, hang on, maybe what we should do is create a file that we could browse. So let's go back to C windows and then we'll go to right okay let's just create a quick file so hey there windowers this is a text file created in microsoft right oh, i can't spell microsoft right inside of windows 1.01 .01. isn't it fascinating Right, so let's save this. And now I want to say, uh, but I want to save this in a different directory. It's not going to let me, is it? Save as. Wow. Do I have to specify an extension? I'm going to do it anyway. Wow.txt. Okay, close that. So, okay. I'm going to have to try and move this now. So let's. Do, 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 do. Copy. Okay. So I want to copy this to C, why, C apps, okay, what am I doing wrong here, copy to C apps, ah, okay, that looks like it may have done it, let's find out. Uh, yeah, there we go. Look, wow.txt. Not a valid notepad file. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what did I do there then? Is that the wrong extension? No, it's not the wrong extension. What's going on then? Oh, no. Technical problems. Here we go. Right, wait. Does it open here? Not a valid notepad. What? Why has it done that? I have no idea. Okay. Okay, scrap that. Let's maybe go for one of the files that's already here. There we go. We'll do abc.txt instead. Okay, right. So, copy to C apps okay perfect so now let's go back here C apps right and then that was browse browser browse open abc.txt browse there we go look at that now what else could it browse though obviously text files what else could you possibly browse Orbitron, I'm using forward slashes because the backslash key on my keyboard is not actually producing any characters for some reason. So I don't know if it's the way it's mapped to the machine or not. I'm not sure. 
Um, right. Uh, ah, the solar. Thank you. It's because I need to use the WRI extension. Ah, yeah. Thank you. That is right. That is right. File stats. Oh, well, this is useful because, yeah, you could view the stats for the file within the actual program without going back to the MS-DOS executive. Okay. Hide and seek. Ah, okay. Find. Yeah, useful. I don't think right does that, does it? Wait, does right do that? Let's go back here. Um, let's check. I can't remember. Windows. Right. Okay, so if we open... Oh, it, look, it's using the doc extension here. Uh, oh, so wait, can I only open doc files? I need notepad then, don't I? Notepad? That's probably what I should have used to start with. There you go, look, notepad, that would have made more sense. Open, ABC, open, okay. Yeah, so notepad has a simple find option. This one looks the same. It's, yeah, same option, isn't it? Find. But yeah, it's got this additional hide option, hasn't it, that it was talking about. What does invert do? Does that like hide things that are not hidden and unhide things that are hidden? I'm guessing that looks like that's what that's doing. Um, Solar Strike, thanks for joining. Hopefully I'll see you in your stream a bit later on. And if you want to send me a link to it on Discord in the stream channel, I'll post it here before the end as well. Uh, right. Do, 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 do. So, so the solar says wind. So, right uses wr. Windows three right uses wri. Windows one right uses doc. Apparently, that's weird, isn't it? That's a bit weird. Right. So yeah. Okay. What else? Expand tab ruler. Oh no, that's useful, isn't it? Wait, I need to check this. Does right have a ruler? Let me know if this is boring. By the way, I just feel a need to check these things now. Okay. Is there a ruler in here? Um, mm, 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 I don't think so. Oh, there is. Wow, I don't think I ever knew that. Wow, there is a ruler. Ooh, and it's got options here for central. Oh, look at that. Oh, I don't think I ever knew that. Okay, well, I think Wright's winning here. Ruler. Procreate. So this just opens another browser. Yes, okay. Nice choice of wording. Random. Okay, so yeah, that appears to be browser. Marks out of 11 for browser, what do we think? I'm not too impressed by that. I don't see... That doesn't... I mean, I think probably the only useful thing there that might be worth having is the hide function, I guess. Maybe. Ah, hi, boy pointer. Thank you for joining. What do we think? NT4 out of 11 says flame point. Pancake says useless out of 11. That's harsh. <laughs> Danny says 3 out of 11. Yeah, that's, I don't know. I don't I don't see what I'd use that for. If, if right was included. I mean, look at this. Has anyone ever seen this? I did not know that that was a thing here. I clearly have not looked hard enough. This has tabs as well. Tabs, yeah. And then header and footer. This is actually more involved than I thought. Page layout, what's in here? You can specify the margins. Paragraph. Yeah, look, this has got loads more functions. Although to be fair, brow browser was 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 advertising itself as a browser, wasn't it? Really, not really a text editor. So maybe we're judging it unfairly there. Um, okay, right. So let's go back to apps. Zocker says one out of eleven for browser. Harsh. Okay. Are we ready for the next executable, which is called cake? Now, do we think this is just going to be a flying cake that flies around the screen and doesn't do anything else? Maybe. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's find out. Okay. Wow. A birthday cake. Ooh, and my stream has stopped on my iPad. Let me just refresh that. Uh, right. Ooh, I love a good setting. Right. Uh, cake text. This is exciting. Uh, number of candles. Can we have 1.01? .01? Flashing and fireworks. This is so exciting. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, look at that. I love it. 
that has made my evening that has but you can't have points for improvement you should be able to have decimal candles i think because 1.01 would have made sense here no. uh right the cake is a lie type i'm a lie okay i'm just gonna i'm gonna do this to pacify people that like memes okay i'm a lie how many candles let's do how many can we do what about nine and nine and nine how many will it let us do oh it didn't like that maybe that was too many oh look now apparently the maximum that you could have is thirty-four thousand four hundred sixty-three. although they'd probably not fit on the cake would they what if we just do 50 that's that seems sensible to me there we go lovely look at that that's made my evening uh fascinating burning oh look you can you can light the candles as well oh look i love that love it i mean again that's completely pointless isn't it i mean, I mean no maybe i mean if you had windows one and you knew it was you know like your brother's birthday or something you could you could turn it on and set this up couldn't you for when your brother got up in the morning and then it would be like a virtual birthday cake yeah love it awesome um oh i forgot almost forgot marks for cake what do we think for this i like this one i'm gonna say a solid probably a solid 8.1 out of 11 for this what do we think let's see actually dominic said do over 9,000 candles let's see can we do 9,000? no that's gonna be too more about 900 maybe oh my god I don't think it's meant to do that, but it appears to be trying to do 900 candles. It's just that they're not actually going onto the cake. Right, what have we got? So, 10 out of 11 from Flame Point. Daw says 11 out of 11. Danny says 2,000 out of 11. Masked says 8.1 out of 11. I agree. I agree. Sky says something's on fire now. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? Oh, no. Right, let's, let's get out of there. Uh, right, okay. So what we got next? Uh Kalin Pop. What are we getting from this? What could this be? Kalin Pop? Popping calendars? A bit random, let's find out. Oh, it's just oh look, it's a little floaty calendar. Oh, how useful. I don't know why I found that so impressive. So wait, let's uh let's try and open let's open something else. What if we open Bounce again? Oh yeah, look, it floats on top. Oh, how useful. It's an overlapping window. Who knew? Who knew? An overlapping calendar. Look at that. Simple but effective. Okay, marks out of 11 for the overlapping calendar. I mean, that is useful actually, isn't it? Could you re... Hang on, can we resize this? No, you can't resize it. I was going to say it'd be useful if you could make it a bit smaller because it'd be more out of the way, wouldn't it? Sky says Steve Jobs would be pissed. <laughs> Excuse the language. Yeah, wow. Who knew? Over yeah, Johnny Johnny, an overlapping window in Windows 1. Yeah, who knew about that? Wonder how they did that. How do you think they did that? The developer of this app. Because it's not a dialog box, is it? I mean I guess they could they could maybe make it appear like it's a dialogue box to the system i'm not sure um but hang on dialogue i don't think you can even move the dialogue boxes can you let's find out about i don't think you can move these no you can't move the dialogue boxes so it's not pretending it's not a dialogue in disguise anyway definitely not uh right oh we've got a spread here so seven out of eleven two out of eleven seven nine hmm a bit divided there i think that would be useful personally um right what we've got next check this looks like it's gonna be checkers yes Ooh. right now this is a game i can play i can play this right okay so auto play okay i'm gonna be red i think red um yeah i'll do intermediate okay i've got i'm confident here why are there ampersands everywhere though that's confusing checkers game copyright 1990 right Okay, what do we think? Am I going to win this game? Let's find out. Probably not, just to forewarn you, but I'm going to have a go. Okay, so. 
point. Uh, ooh, um, uh. Oh, that was a bad idea. Oh, no, wait, I can move that there. Oh, no, 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 I can't. Oh no, it's the graphics. It's the graphics putting me off. Okay, wait. No, I'm not gonna. Can I move that? If I move that there. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna have to sacrifice this one now. Um. Right, so now I can do that. That was a bad idea as well. Oh no. I think, in conclusion, I'm probably not at intermediate level. Maybe. Oh no, wait. No, this is not going well. Okay, uh. Tournament regulations. If you can capture an opponent's piece, you must do so. Oh, can I? Where can I do that? Oh, here. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that. And now I'm going to get captured anyway, so that's pointless. Great. Um, okay, let's do my original move again. Uh, right. Now I'm going to get captured again. Oh no. Mm, right. What now? Do, 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 do. I'll have to move this one, I think, won't I? Great. Great. No, I can't move that. Let's move that there. Um. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, look at that. I'm gonna get a king. Exciting times. Uh, right, so now, now I can start bullying these black ones around, so you better start moving, because I've got a king here. Oh, I had one. <laughs> oh dear. Right, uh, let's see. This is, this is more intense than I thought. Can't move that there, because... Oh. Oh wait, I've got this one here, okay. Does anyone play checkers? By the way, or drafts, it's usually called drafts in the UK. But obviously most software is American, so I've, I've become used to the fact that it's called checkers. Usually, if you find an app version. Why did I do that? That was really stupid. Wasn't that really stupid? Oh no. I'm just going to stop now because I'm not going to win anyway. But anyway, marks for checkers out of 11. What do we think? Look, again, we've got difficulty levels. We can look. You can even have local co-op play, it looks like, with two players here. And auto play. Maybe if I put it on auto play, see if it lets me win. Probably not. So yeah, what do we think? Marks out of 11 for checkers. I mean, you can't go wrong with checkers, can you, really? Flame point says 7. Johnny says 8.1. Danny says 6. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's a classic, isn't it? You can't really go wrong. Anyway, let's come out of checkers now. Right, what have we got next? So, chess net. This looks like it's going to be chess. And I'm just going to forewarn everyone I can't play chess at all. So, I'm not even going to try and play this. Because I cannot play it. Uh, okay, so again, this is shareware. And yeah, I mean, this is literally chess. This doesn't even fit on the screen, though. That's not helpful, is it? When was this? When's this from? Maybe it was designed for a later version of Windows. 1985 to 1988. So yeah, why is it not fitting on the screen? That's not good. Connect. 
Ooh. You oh look, you can play you can play multiplayer over a cable. <laughs> wow. Rotate board. Set white clock. Okay. Conclude modem game. Oh, so it is it literally is chestnut. Interesting. Uh, so, again, I'm not going to play chess because I can't play it. Marks for chestnut. What do we think? Yeah, chess via dial-up. Why not? That's so... I mean, that is so niche. In 1985 as well, that would have been incredibly niche, surely. Would you have even managed to have found anyone to play with? Or would you have to have literally a physical cable between you and your friend in order to play it? Marks for chess. Anyone out of 11? Have we got any chess fans? Because I'm not a fan. I mean, it's really too complicated for me. Way too complicated. Sky says 7. Flamebox says 8. Orbitron says Solitaire and Pinball are the only Windows games I know how to play. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Void Pointer says NT 3.51 out of 11. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a chess fan, so I probably agree. Uh, right. I need to speed up, though. We've got loads of these to get through. I need to start speeding up. Okay, clip file. What's this? This is a calendar again, is it? Looks like. Format. Oh, is it a clipboard? Is it a clipboard thingy, Bob? What's going on here? Oh, so this, again, this looks like a file browser, doesn't it? So you can open text files, images, and then whatever these are. I don't really know what they are. I don't recognize those. Don't recognize those. Anyone know what they are? WMF files, SYL files, and DIF files. I don't know what they are. <laughs> don't know. Uh, so yeah, that's clip file. Don't have much else to say about that. I think I might just skip over that. Um, I think just to get through these a bit quicker, I'll stop asking for votes. But if you want to give me votes when I'm in the app, let me know. So that was clip file. And then we've got connect. Connect the points mouse demo. Ooh. Oh, that's exciting. Ooh, look at that. Awesome. This is very slow, actually, to do that. Interesting. This would get boring very quickly, though, I think, wouldn't it? I think... Connect the points mouse demo. Weird. Uh, right, what have we got next? Cube. Oh, look, it's a cube. In fact... <laughs> that's a 4D cube. Is it me or is that a 4D cube? That is so bizarre. This is a 4D cube, isn't it? What they've, they've got a name. Are they called Tesseracts? Is it Tesseracts as a 4D cube? A 4D cube, wow. Oh my gosh. Orbitron says cube is in one alpha. Oh, is it? Is it this app? Well, I didn't know that. Interesting. Oh, we've got some votes for cube, I think. Solar Strikes is 8.1 out of 11 for cube. I mean, this is mesmerizing, isn't it? Look at that. And not just a cube, a four-dimensional cube. Yes, thanks, Jonathan. It is a Tesseract, isn't it? Yes, a 4D cube or a Tesseract. 8.1 out of 11. 11 out of 11. Void Pointer. Yeah, Void Pointer's a fan of the Tesseract. The spinning Tesseract. Ooh, there's different styles, though. Black on white. Ooh, okay. Black on white. White on black. Oh, look at that. You can invert the colours as well. Oh, no. What more could you possibly want? i tell you what we should do right at the end. Someone might need to remind me. We should open all of these apps. You know, all the really garish ones that have like epilepsy issues. We should open them all and have them all tiled right at the end. And take a screenshot. That would be fascinating. Okay, so that was Cube. Oh, and now we've got the sequel, Cube 2. This is so exciting. Okay, Cube 2, are you ready? Are you ready? It's the same. That is the same. That was a lie. That's the same app. Okay. Clearly you can't beat the original cube, so the sequel is just the same thing again. Cube 2. Okay. Well, I might well, I might as well delete this, surely. Or should we save it for later, just in case? I don't know. I'll save it. Okay. Right. Dialogue. What's this? Dialogue editor. What? A, what? A dialogue? What? As in, is this like dialogue between people? Or are we talking about dialogue boxes? Or what? 
this looks like maybe dialog boxes and I don't really know what I'm doing. Oh yeah, look, it's a dialog box editor because you've got an option here for window controls. Interesting. But yes, unfortunately I don't have any dialogues to edit. So yes, I'm not going to be able to do anything there. So that's dialog editor. Okay, so dig dig clock, which I'm guessing is a digital clock. Yeah, look. Ooh, and this looks like it's going to be on top again, doesn't it? Let's find out. Let's open cube again. Oh, no, wait, actually, yeah, the... Wait, let's zoom here, because the apps don't normally cover that area, do they? Oh, okay, so it it's not on top, but it sits in the bottom of the taskbar here. That's interesting. Now, wait, when did this app come out? Does it have an about screen or anything? No, it doesn't have any any options. Now, that, that's interesting. Do you think someone designed this app before the clock was put there in Windows 95? Probably, I'm assuming. So it's not like a backported thing from Windows 95, I'm guessing. Oh, doors. Thank you, my face is covering it, isn't it? Let me let me just remove myself so you can see what I'm talking about. This would make more sense. Here we go, this is the clock. You can actually see it properly here. So yeah, do you what do you think someone like saw this in 95 and decided they were going to make an app that provided a clock in the bottom right hand corner for earlier versions of windows i'm not sure it's possible i mean that's really useful isn't it that's definitely useful have the date and time there definitely flame point says digital clock 7 out of 11 yes so i mean this is use this i would definitely use this if i was using windows 1 back in the day this would be very useful 10 out of 11 says green light yeah Pancake says it's actually useful out of 11. Yeah, it's not just a spinning tesseract. This actually has a, a good use. Yeah, still EMP says would actually use 11 out of 11. Perfect. Yeah, me too. I think there's an overwhelming consensus there. Yes. Okay, well, we might as well leave clock there because I don't know how to close it. Okay, there's another one here. Digi clock. This is, oh, look, this is another clock. Now they're overlapping each other. Let me just remove myself again. Now we've got two clocks that are competing Oh, one of them disappeared, though. There were two, but one's actually disappeared now. So, there we go. Never mind. Right. Let me put myself back. Um, right. So, let's go to disk. Disk look. I don't know what this is. Sector looker. Hmm. Okay. This is very niche, isn't it? Change drive. Okay. Sector. Enter the desired sector number in hex file why would you need to find sectors though why would that be useful hmm okay right easel oh there you go easel crashes windows so we're not going to be able to look at that oh no okay hang on we need to reset this let's reset well, that's uh, a bit disappointing because easel actually sounded quite interesting. All right, so Windows, Win. Let's go back to where were we? we were in apps. And then that was easel. So, yeah, easel doesn't work. Fish. Oh, wow. I love this. I love it. What does my mouse pointer do? It's turned into a fish. Does that do anything? No. No, I guess I can just swim around here as a fish. As one fish among many fish. Uh, right, preferences. Number of fish. Right, how many should we try? 50. Oh, yes. They're inside each other. Oh, no, this is not good. Oh, no, there, there's cannibalism going on here. Right, hang on, I'm going to go more 50. Let's do, uh, what about, can we do 100? No, so we've got a limit here on the number of digits. We can only do a two-digit number. Let's do 99. There we go. Isn't that beautiful and not glitchy at all, is it? See, look at all these fantastic uses for Windows 1 that you could have, that you could have used it for back in the day. Oh, dear. Uh, right, species. What's this here? So, oh, look, you can choose what species you. Oh, there's penguins as well. Right, hang on. Can we turn these off? Yeah, let's turn these off. Let's just have penguins. I 
I don't know if you can tell, but this program is actually slowing down the virtual machine, which is not, not a good sign. Okay, penguins. Glitchy penguins. Oh, yeah, Sky says, wait, penguins aren't fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Oh, look, you can have it in a pop-up as well. Oh, look at that. You can have your own little aquarium when you're working. Brilliant. I mean, that's just, that is not manic at all, is it? Well, I feel like we should give marks for fish. What do we think? Oh, I think some people have. Okay, so uh, Johnny says Vista out of 11. Doors says 11. Green Light says 11. Daddy says XP. Yeah, I like this. I like that. Very interesting. Okay, Flasher. Now, Flasher has some documentation here. So let's see. Flasher, a Microsoft Windows stroboscope program. Okay, guys, epilepsy warning. Epilepsy warning. <laughs> okay, wait. Uh, is a Microsoft application placed in the public domain? Okay, right. Written basically as an exercise, but might serve some use in demonstrations. So basically, this one doesn't have a use either. Okay, Flasher. Oh, it just flashes through the colors. Who knew? Who knew? Right, so color, black and white. Okay. Falls. Ooh, speed. Oh, yes. Right, let's ramp this up. Right, okay. A hundred per... Oh, my God. Color. <laughs> hey, I tell you what this is like. This is like the Windows 8 out-of-box experience. <laughs> Oh my god. Wait, where's the mouse gone? Oh no. I can't see the mouse anymore. This is not good. This is really not good. Ah, there it is. Okay, panic over. Uh, full. Okay, I don't think I'm going to set this full screen. I think that's enough of that, maybe. Let's just close. That was Flasher. Okay, font demo. Sample font application. Ooh. Oh, now that's useful as well, actually. You can see all your fonts that you have installed. That is useful. Useful. Look, another useful one. Awesome. Right, font edit. Ah, and we have some font files. Okay, open. Ah, okay, look, you can edit your own fonts here. Lovely. Perfect. However, can you just... I mean, can you just start a new one without having to open one that's already there who knows i mean that would be useful if you're interested in, in making your own fonts but obviously that would take a little bit of patience uh right that's font editor free mem what is this oh this is like a little thing down here that shows you how much memory you have free fuse hey it's the mystify screensaver look at that who knew Who knew that it was that old? Uh, right, what else? Get bitmap. Capture bitmap module. Capture. Oh, okay, so this gets bitmaps from the clipboard. I don't think I have any bitmaps on here. Otherwise, we could have tested that out. But I don't have any. Uh, right, globe. Ah, spinning globe. Which has also made my mouse disappear. Why does that happen? I don't know why some of these apps make the mouse disappear. Uh, I mean, I don't speak French, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Does this invert the colours? No. Oh, that was that was uh, opposite rotation, wasn't it? I think. Uh, manual rotation. I mean, this this looks not very good, does it? <laughs> um, what's this? Oh, look, you can choose places. Okay, right. Uh, let's just do... Let's do... I don't know. Let's just do Reykjavik. And then we can zoom in. Oh, yeah, look at that. You can, look, It's like Google Maps in the 80s. Still says move the globe with your mouse. It's not doing anything, actually. If I drag, nothing's happening here. And Orbitron, yeah, Orbitron actually, uh, Orbitron says I ported the mouse driver from Windows 2. I don't know if that might be why this is not working. I'm not sure. 
try the keyboard still says no the keyboard is not doing anything either apparently so yeah i'm not sure how to control this right what else options oh look it does have a dark mode right let's zoom out i mean this is a bit better this is less garish dark mode what's this oh it, look it gives you the time in that place as well useful very useful let's just do one more what about let's do dublin okay there we go i mean that's close to where i am kind of sky says it <laughs> imagine street view in the 80s yeah oh my god yeah there we go that was globe right what else uh, hanoi i don't know what this is towers of hanoi what is this what and what even is this is this where you move these rings around? I can't start. Okay, but I'm not doing anything. I'm just watching this now. Why is that? This just is this just meant to be entertainment? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> not. I'm not sure. Set colors. Oh, okay, right. Um, okay, yellow. And yellow. Yellow and white and black. Let's do that. Again, I'm not sure what the use of this is. Maybe it's just entertainment. You know when you like when you have a doctor's appointment or something and there's like something random on the screen just to entertain people when they wait. Maybe that's what this is for in the 80s. Maybe it's just like background entertainment. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I actually don't know, though. Oh, bizarre. Jonathan, Jonathan says it's weirdly me mesmerising. Yes, it is, isn't it? Oh, dear. Towers of Hanoi. Right. Next. Heap walk. Luke Heapwalker. Oh, God. What is this now? Walk. What is this? Okay, this is way too technical for me. What What's going on here? Anyone? I'm not going to write anything because that sounds like a bad idea. Free allocated memory. Yeah, what is this? What is this? Anyone? This just looks technical for me. Red edit for Windows 1. Hex, oh yeah, hex editor. Oh uh, yeah, it's hex, isn't it? Yes, by MC. I think you're right. Heap walk. Okay, hex calc. The, yeah, this is just going to give you the hex version of numbers, it sounds like, doesn't it? Times three. Yeah, that just gives you literally what it says. The hex answer to a calculation. Okay. Um, what else? HP calc. This just looks like a calculator. And I mean, yeah, I'm guessing this is going to be more useful than the Windows 1 calculator. Let's actually remind ourselves what that was like. Do, 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 do. Windows. It's very basic, I think, isn't it? Uh, wait. Hang on, what's going on here? Calc. Why is that opening that calculator? What is going on? Windows. Calc. Okay, this is the Windows calculator. Yeah, I mean, this is much simpler, isn't it? Now, I think, even though this looks simpler, I think you can actually do some other functions with the Windows 1 calculator, but I think it explains this in the About box, if I remember right. Yeah, so look, you can... So Q is square root, N is change sign, and then M, press M and one of these keys for memory. So you can do a few other things that are not... I don't think they're all referenced. Oh, they are actually, yeah, they're square root, there's plus minus. So... Sine, cos, and tan. I'm guessing you can't do any of those functions on here. So actually, yeah, it would be useful to have another calculator, wouldn't it? Where you could do those things if you needed to. That is useful. HP calc. Danny, I think the apps were from archive.org. But I downloaded them a very long time ago. So I am not sure. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, so Johnny and Sky said that the calculator 
thing where it was opening the same thing twice might be a conflict, but they have different names, don't they? Like the executable names are different, aren't they? So I don't know, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Wow, that is interesting. Why is there a massive help button there? Okay, that's very weird. Uh, right, anyway, let's close out of that. Okay, right, so where were we? Uh, so icon edit. Any guesses of what this one's going to be? It's an icon editor. Look at that. And again, I don't have any icon files, so we can't do that unless we can make a new one, can we? Oh, yeah, look. Design your own icon. Right, I'm going to have a good go at this. Let's just, uh, let's have a quick go. Oh, and again, Orbitron says icon edit is from the developer release 5 of Windows 1. So it's another developer application. Do, 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 do. This already looks horrendous. Never mind. I look, guys, I did my best. It's just that one of these window pane things is smaller than the other. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, let's do white background. Color. Screen. What does this do? Color. I don't know what that does. Size large. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Orbitron, Orbitron says Windows on Windows 1. Yes. Right. That was Icon Editor. Okay. What else we got? KC Res. What is this? Oh, this is a. This lets you calculate the resistance of a resistor by putting in what numbers. Uh, sorry, what, what colors it has on it. No, that's useful. That is useful. I mean, that's useful if you need something like this. That's quite a good idea. So, yeah, in case anyone's not aware, a resistor is a component that you can use in electrical circuits, and it has. Uh, they're tiny, but they have different color bands on them, and the different combinations of colors tell you what value of resistance the resistor has which is useful because different circuits need different values of resistance so yeah actually this is really useful if you didn't know what the different colors meant you could put it in here and it would tell you look at that useful uh right okay what was that that was casey rares what about clots that one crashes windows so we're not going to find out what clots is which is a shame because that sounds interesting Right, let's just restart this. Uh, okay. Let's go back into Windows. Right, Lucas. Okay, I'm immediately under pressure here because there's a timer and I don't know what it's timing. Lucas's problem. Does anyone know what this is? Is this a known game that I'm not aware of? I have never heard of this. So, anyone know? <laughs> Still said it looked like a corn on the cob. <laughs> yeah, anyone know what this is? I don't know what this is. No idea. Um, you can only move a square where the where the cursor is across. But why? What am I doing? What am I actually doing though? Yes, let's try again. Anyone? Does anyone know? It's the frogs and lily pads thing, Sire says. What is that, though? I don't know what that is. Oh, I see. Okay, 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 okay. You have to swap things over. Okay. Okay. I think it's probably best for everyone that I don't try and actually win that game, because that's not gone well so far. Now, Mole crashed this earlier when I... This was, one, again, one of the random things that I tried to see if it worked. But let's try it again. You never know. It might work this time. No, look, nothing. Although it's not crashed, actually. So, could be worse. Right, let's try Palette. Orbitron, is this another demo app? It looks like it. Wow, this is... This is just bizarre. What are these things? They look like llamas coming out of holes that is really disturbing i feel like this could be something that you'd see in a nightmare this is interesting though because these little 
creature things are actually being drawn outside the boundaries of the window, aren't they? Because there's one on the title bar up here and one down here in like the little task bar area. So that's interesting. Um... Oh! Oh! They are moles, aren't they? They're moles. It was mole.exe, that's what these are. That makes sense. Someone said that. Who said that? Um, still. Yeah, thanks, still. that. Yeah, you're right. The moles are from mole.exe. There you go. Come on, that should have been obvious, shouldn't it? Why didn't I work that out? There you go. Now we've got moles everywhere. Why not? Right, let's look at puzzle. Oh, now, now this. I think I probably can do, but I'm not going to do it because that's probably famous last words. But yeah, look, this is that classic number puzzle where you've got to get all the numbers in order from 1 to 15 or whatever it is. So yeah, that's puzzle. Uh, what else do we have? Satellite. Find that bird. Oh no, I'm under pressure now again. Satellite finder. Okay. Begin. Sat oh, okay. Right. So let's do Florida. I'm looking for galaxy. What? What is this? This is a. Uh, this is like TV, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It's like Channel Finder for. Okay, the Disney Channel, Town Orlando. Okay. So wait, is this for you to like line up your satellite dish with? What? This is so weird. Why is it called Find That Bird up here? Does anyone have any ideas? <laughs> the, some of these some of these Windows 1 apps are more confusing than I thought they were going to be. Okay, step one. Point mouse at begin and click. Yeah. Choose a state from the list. Yeah, did that. Choose the city. Yeah, choose a satellite from the list. Read the azimuth and elevation and set your controls. Oh, why does it say find that bird then? Let's just... We'll never know. We will never know. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. Look, it's got the information down here. So this whole area here, what is this for? Finding birds, maybe, but I don't see any. That's just so random, isn't it? Random. Chad says the bird is the satellite. Oh, is it like is it like a lingo? Is it the satellites? Maybe. I wouldn't know actually. Um, right. Shaker. What is this now? Uh, start. What am I starting? Start. Show state on. What is this? Parameters. Allocation claim. Anyone know what this is? I don't know what this is either. <laughs> Orbitron says, I've made just car 17 and you're watching the Disney Channel. <laughs> Disney Channel's a throwback, isn't it? When did that um, stop? Quite a while ago. I mean, what is, what is this? Who knows? I don't know. Do you think the moles are ever going to disappear? Or will I have to restart Windows? Uh, right, slap. Oh, now there's four slaps. There's slap, slap two, slap junior, and slap junior two. So, I mean, this could be a whole series, couldn't it? Let's find out. Slap. F9 now slaps. I can't see. Wait. The mole obscured that. Oh, no. I don't know what it did. What does slap do? I've just done something and I'm not sure what it is. F7 now slaps screen to printer. Oh, it's for print screening. That's useful. Slap Junior. Slap instructions. Okay. Control F9 captures current window. Alt F9 captures whole screen. Shift F9 captures current whole window. So it's for print screening, isn't it? That's useful. Very useful. Slap Junior 2. That looks the same. Okay, spy. Oh no! Spy crashes Windows, and I hope that that's not literally like a spying application that's now going to spy on me somehow. Make it look like it crashes Windows and then spies on me. Who knows? Right, that was spy. What else we got? We're almost at the end here, so spy 104. What is this? So this looks like it's showing you what windows you have open. Show detail. 
It is, isn't it? It's showing you what windows you have open and how big they are and stuff. It's interesting, isn't it? A lot of these apps are very simple and not very useful, like Cube and stuff. And then some of them, like the, the other ones, seem to be like really like niche things. Like like that one. What was that? Spy. Like that's quite niche, isn't it? Looking at what windows you have open. Seems a bit niche. So yeah. Uh right, so Starbase. What is this? Not enough memory. Oh, what a shame. Uh Superfuse. Ooh. Nice. This is another Mystify screensaver-esque app. Look at that. Mesmerizing. Mesmerizing. Right, Superfuse. Uh, Sys Graph. Ooh, now this looks like this is monitoring some resource usage. I'm not sure what, though. What is this monitoring? Is it going to tell us? About... System Q graphical display. That's not helped me. Has that helped you? I still don't know what it's monitoring. What is it monitoring? Anyone know? System usage, but what? What usage of what though? Green light says CPU. Yeah, it could be CPU. Couldn't it? I don't know. Who knows? I mean, let's iconize it anyway because it was down there anyway. We'll just leave it there to to uh, carry on. Okay, to pay. What is this? Oh, is this like um? Mahjong. Looks like Mahjong. Oh, right. Well, we can do this. Um, he says as he makes an illegal move in the game. Wait, hang on. What am I doing here? It's this, isn't it? Wait. Is it not Mahjong? Or is it just that the graphics are so bad that you can't actually tell what you can click on? Don't you just pair these up? Oh, wait. They're not the same. Um. Oh, my gosh. Okay. These are the same. Yes, there you go. It's Mahjong, isn't it? I'm just being stupid. That looks really intense, actually. They're very, uh, very detailed patterns, aren't they? Color. Okay, so you can make it black and white. No beeps. Whoops. Light and tile sides. Okay, dark and tile sides. Okay. Oh, that's a bit better, actually. Help tiles. That just shows you all the possible tiles. Uh, select game. Hint. That's a very quick hint. You'd have to have a good eye for that. Start over backup. Autoplay. Ooh, mesmerizing. I like that. Uh, uh. Right. Um. <laughs> oh, Splitwire says apparently Mahjong and Taipei. Ta Taipei? Are two different games that use the same tiles? Oh, are they? I don't know if they are. Uh, right. This looks like TTT. Oh, do you think this is going to be something to do with T? That'd be exciting. Let's find out. Oh, it's tic-tac-toe again. Now, look, I can play the 2D version. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, let's, let's play this version. I can play this one. Okay. The computer's good. The computer is good. Uh, about that this is 1990 as well this only has one difficulty level it looks like as well click in an empty space oh I didn't see that let's have one more go of trying to fool the computer here uh, right nope it's too good it is too good interesting very interesting right web Web instance. What is this? Pen. Mouse. Ooh. Oh, it's this thing again. Oh, no, this is fun. Oh, you could have hours of fun with this, couldn't you? Love it. Look at that. Fascinating. What does webbing do here? Delay. Zero. Oh, now it's just drawing. Okay weird a very weird right what what have we got left here so that was web win 87 m what is this i'm not sure that didn't appear to do anything win bag one win begin 
win really and what's this a windows program generator copyright 1987 by susan crane well author author's name wow make program Oh, directory. Uh, C. C with the wrong slash because the other one doesn't work. Program description. Uh. Um. What? Go to directory C and type make round. This is too complicated for me. Too complicated. I'm not going there. Not going there. Uh, right. Win wine mine. It's mine, Sweeper. Look at that. I'm also very bad at Minesweeper. So I'm not going to play this either. Wine Mine for Windows 1 and 2. Copyright 2000. Windows 1 and 2 port 2013. There you go. Right, what have we got left? Win Kerm. Kermit A. What's this? Something to do with ports. Not sure. I don't have anything connected to these ports, so I don't know what this is potentially doing. Not sure. Okay. Terminate Kermit. Okay. That sounds nasty. Uh, wow. That's what I made earlier. X word. Oh, it's a crossword app. Oh, look at that. Okay. Where are the clues, though? Oh, wait. That's not a crossword. That's fine. Okay. Let's... Uh... Start a new puzzle. Wait, is this a crossword maker? Let's find out. Oh yeah, look, you can make a crossword. Wow. Fascinating. Still says I thought Xword was going to be a text editor. So did I. I thought it was going to be a text editor, but no, apparently it's a crossword editor. There you go. Orbitron says make the leaked crossword. I could do that, couldn't I? But that would probably take me a very long time, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, there you go. Look at that. You can. Hey, who knew you could make crosswords on Windows One? Who knew that? Puzzle. Build mode. That's what we're in, isn't it? Build mode. Make solution. <laughs> open. It's a shame that there are none that we can open. That would be useful. Hmm. I like that idea. Right. So that was the last app that we have here. Now I do have some other ones in folders here. And then I also have some floppy images as well. So let's see actually if we can have a quick look through what we've got here. This one's browser again, but that sounds like it's the same as the app we looked at earlier that was also called browser. Is this the same thing? It looks similar, doesn't it? Hide and seek. This could just be a different version of browser it looks like, doesn't it? Get help window. I'm guessing that's just a different version of, version of a browser, which is not that exciting, really. Uh, right, what else we got? Composer, demo, tape deck. Ooh, what's going on here? Load song. Russian dance, okay. Well, I mean, the sound's not gonna work on here. Anyway. Okay, this is so weird. What? Wait, what is going on here? Is this just literally playing? Is this just playing songs? Anyone? I just don't know what's going on there. Play, record. I don't know. Sky says I love the cassette pixel art. Yeah, I like that. That's nice, isn't it? Love it. But yeah, what is this program? I, I just don't know. Not sure. Ah, uh, yeah, it could be. Uh, yeah, T T Prades says PC speaker music. It could be, couldn't it? Actually, it could be. Yeah. Right. Um. That was composer, and then what else we got? Oh, there's a lot of things here. What is this stuff though? Oh, this is just for clots. 
Oh, that was that thing that we tried opening earlier, wasn't it? And we couldn't find out what it was. Clots. A game of falling pieces similar to Tetris for use under Windows 2 and 3. Oh, not Windows 1 then. Okay, that's weird. So, uh... Yeah, there's a lot of things in here, aren't they? In fact, some of these things we've already opened. Haven't we? Like boxes, Kalin Pop. These are just repeats of what we've already seen, it looks like. Most of these, anyway. Are there any ones that we haven't? Slug, maybe? Slug we haven't looked at. Is it just that one? Fuse. I think it's just Slug here that is one I don't recognise. Let's see what this is. Don't know. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. What about Clots? Nope. That's the one that crashes it. Yes, that's the one that crashes it. Uh, right. Now, I think I'm a I actually do have a time limit today, and I need to leave, basically, very shortly, because I have something else that I need to do. Uh, but let's just have a quick look at what else we've got in some of these folders. Uh, well, that one's empty, so that solves that problem. Uh, what else have we got here? That one's empty as well. Okay. Uh, that one's also empty. EXE, uh, life.exe. The game, it's the game of life. I can't play this either. I'm not going to. I mean, there's not really much playing, is there, with the game of life? Look, that one didn't even do anything. Uh, so, game of life, okay. MM calc formula. Oh, look, it calculates the molecular mass of molecules. Wow. So, what do we do? H2O then. H2O. Let's do one gram. Is it a gram or kilogram? I don't know. H2O. So, wait. One mole So, one gram of H2O has a molecular mass of 18.02. Maybe. That's quite useful. Niche, again. It's niche, isn't it? Niche, but useful. Mouse kaleidoscope. Ooh, this is... Oh, this is one of the best ones. This has got to be one of the best ones. Look at this. Wow. Love it. Love that. Can I do a wow logo? Someone needs to take a screenshot. Probably not. That's probably the best I can do, I think. Uh, length. Interesting. Oh, look, you can have colour as well. Right. I think I'm going to say that's... I'm probably going to have to stop there because, like I said, I do actually have to be somewhere very shortly. So, unfortunately, whereas last time I could stay here for almost five hours, I actually can't do that today. Uh, so, hopefully you've had some fun with me anyway, looking at lots of these Windows 1 apps. And, obviously, there are plenty more. So, I think what I probably will do is, after the stream, I'll upload this selection of apps that I've demonstrated here. Uh, and I'll put a link in the video description so that if you want to, you can have a play around with some of these yourself. But I mean, there's lots that you can find online as well. I'm sure there's going to be lots that are on archive.org, for example. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed the stream. Um, I will stay around for a few minutes just in case anyone's got any questions like I usually do right at the end. So actually, let me come out of Windows 1 and actually let's just close it properly. So let's uh, go here and end our Windows session. I'll just come out of there. Go to OBS here as well. I can see myself. Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to ask before I go, then I'll spend a couple of minutes here just in case. Uh, but I can see that a, m a lot of people actually stayed right till the end. So thank you very much for joining. I'm glad that you found it entertaining. I thought it was nice to do something a bit different, isn't it? We haven't really looked at a very old version of Windows yet on a stream uh or on the channel really i think the oldest i've done a series on is 95 so actually i thought that was an interesting thing to do i mean if there's enough interest then i'm happy to carry to look back at windows one in a stream again and maybe look at some more software if anyone's got any specific software they want to look at or we can look at the remainder of the software that i have here as well i don't mind but obviously just let me know if you're on the discord come and let me know basically there's a feedback channel there that you can just say yeah yeah i'd be interested in the stream on this and by the way that reminds me i've not done this for the whole stream but if you're not on the discord come and join us if you go to windows on windows.com all the links or to all the socials are there including the discord come and join us if you're not there already come and talk about windows and lots of other stuff with us it's fun it's fun come and join us uh okay so 
what's going on in chat just before I go. Still says you took two screenshots. So those are the ones I asked for. Thank you. <laughs> um, Flame Point says maybe do some DOS software. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Greenlight says, do you have cassettes at home? I do actually. Yeah, I do. I, I still use cassettes actually. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Sky says we can do another cursed idea again. Yes, cursing things is always fun, isn't it? Doors says make a Windows 2 stream. Yes, again, that's another good idea that we could do. Jacob says you should try running these programs in Windows 2 and 3. Again, that's a good idea as well. I'd be interested to see how many of those run in, yeah, Windows 2 and 3. Like that idea as well. Mm -hmm. Johnny says if I haven't noticed that they've recently joined the Discord, I'm glad. I'm glad. Jacob says he likes the shirt. Thank you. I think I wore this last time, didn't I? Orbitron says try DOS malware. There was an OS first time, a video on that, wasn't there? That was quite fun. DOS malware. Yeah, Pancake says DOS or Windows 1 malware. It's an option, isn't it? I think the good thing about live streams is I'm not constrained. You know, like in a video series, it would be strange to just like like run malware, wouldn't it, when I'm looking at a build. But in a live stream, it's not as constrained. So there's a lot more, like we've got a lot more options and things we can do haven't we basically so yeah good idea like it perfect uh so thank you very much again for staying all the way through if you did and by the way let me know if you did and i'll give you a shout out so yeah thank you very much if you stayed all the way through um uh just in case you're new to the streams then they happen every two weeks they're meant to be on fridays but sometimes i have to change it so this week i had to change it again to a saturday but fingers crossed it should be the next stream i'm just going to check this it should be on let's see we're going to be september so the third so yeah the next stream it should be on friday the 10th of september and next week if everything goes to plan because this has been delayed for quite a while as well you should see the first windows 8 build video finally because i've had to delay it about three times so apologies about this if you've been waiting for it it is coming it will be next friday the third so it will go up at the normal time next week i'm not traveling anywhere or doing anything else next week so there should be no reason why that shouldn't be going up next week and thank you very much for your patience to everyone that's been waiting for that video okay uh, so orbitron and still and I think Sky stayed as well all the way through. Thank you very much if you did. Green light, yeah, was st stayed all the way through. Thank you very much for the support. I hope you've enjoyed it, even if you just dropped in and didn't stay till the end. I still, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so yeah, I will see you all in a couple of weeks' time. And hopefully, if you're not there already, I will see you on the Discord very shortly. Oh, and just before I go, actually, the very last thing solar strike and i'm only saying this because solar strike did a stream the other day that i found really fascinating where he was installing uh betas of windows whistler uh, whistler that's a new one windows whistler so xp betas so if you're interested solar strike said that they were going to start streaming after my stream this evening and they're going to be resuming looking at windows xp betas so if you're interested solar strikes you want to send me a link to the stream on the discord and i'll post it here before i go if you post it in the streams channel i'll just put it in the chat actually before i leave if you want to do that now do 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 yeah see splitwise visceral look i'm making up code names now as well so yeah i will post a link if you're interested i will hopefully be there as well i have to go and do something really quickly but then i'm hopefully coming back to be there so i will post a link to solar strikes stream uh in the chat i will do that right now actually since i've got it thanks solar strike so yeah if anyone's interested in xp beaters come and join us at this link i will be there shortly myself thank you very much for joining once again and i will see you all in the next one